If you are using cloth diapers, you should definitely be using cloth wipes. If you are a human being that has a face with skin, you should definitely be using cloth wipes. Cloth wipes, not just for baby butts anymore. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make these reusable, washable wipes that you can use not just for wiping baby's butts, but also for cleaning your house, cleaning your face, hopefully not also cleaning the butt and your face. They're pretty easy and they're a great scrap buster project. So join me. Hi, I'm Nikita and welcome to my channel where this is what I do. I drink and I soap things. All right, today I'm very excited. I am drinking a French 75. Ooh, does that sound so fancy? My sister learned about it in Snoop Dogg's cookbook, From Crook to Cook. So, you know it's good. I'm gonna actually make this right here with you. I don't usually do this, this is so fun. You're going to need gin. I'm using Wild Roots Gin. It's super delicious, even just a sip on by itself. It is made in Central Oregon, so local-ish for me. You're also going to need champagne. You're going to need lemon juice. You're going to need a spoon, simple syrup, a shot glass, and a champagne glass. So first we're gonna start out with the gin. We're gonna do about a shot worth of gin and pour that into the champagne glass. Then this is fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh, and no, it says lentil soup mix. Don't believe it, it lies. We're gonna do a half of a shot glass of lemon juice and then simple syrup. I like my drink sweet, so I'm gonna do like that. If you do not like your drink sweet, then you do a little bit less. <laughs> Stir it up. Speech, speech. Once that is all stirred up, we're gonna top it off with champagne. And there you go, a French 75. Cheers. Oh, it's so tasty. This is a cloth wipe that I made before Tiny Squish was born. You can see that it's fraying a little bit on the edge, but this has been washed and used a lot. And the great thing about these is that if they ever do get super worn out or too gross for you to handle, they're not very expensive and you can just toss them in the trash. So what we do is we fold these up and we keep them inside of a diaper wipe container and and we store them dry, so we spray them after they come out of the container. You can store them wet if you want, but you just have to be careful of mildew because the longer that they sit in liquid, then the bigger chance there is that they'll kind of start to like mold and get nasty. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll show you how to fold these so that they will pop up out of a wipe dispenser, like super fancy. And I'll also share with you my super secret recipe for my cloth wipe spray. The secret is that it's not a secret. Shh. If you're not using these for baby wipes, you can also use them for face wipes. Ooh. Just put some micellar water on here and it makes a great like makeup cleansing cloth. Because it's flannel, they also make great dust rags too. So you could just cut up your extra flannel and use them as cleaning rags. So make sure that you go get flannel. I'll link some cute prints and patterns in the description or use some scraps and Let's get started. So these are pinking shears. They look like those special scissors that everybody in elementary school used to fight over, you know? Like make the edges of your cards look so fancy. If you want to do the fast and easy way, you will need a pair of pinking shears. I can link a pair in the description if this is the way you're going. You are also going to need flannel. I have been saving all of this flannel from different projects I've done. You may recognize this from my pajama pants video. And because I don't really care what prints are on my cloth wipe since they're just being used to wipe up poop, then I went to Joann's and I got some fabric remnants. This is like two-fifths of a yard and it was like a dollar fifty. So if you don't care about the prints, there you go. You're gonna need a measuring implement of some kind, and you're also going to need a rotary cutter or fabric scissors. Rotary cutter is much easier though. We are going to be cutting each of our flannel pieces to seven inches square. Seven inches by seven inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one, and once I've done that, I'm gonna lay it on top of a couple layers of flannel and use it as kind of a template, because it's not important that we get these super exact. 
So here is my start of a cloth wipe. Now that I have this huge stack of cloth wipe squares cut out, it's time to take a drink. Ooh. That was hard work, am I right? So now you've got all your squares. The problem is that we can't leave them like this because when you wash them, the edges will start to fray. You can see that on this cloth wipe that the edges are fraying. And I actually did prep this one. I didn't just leave it cut like this. So when you're cutting flannel or really any kind of like cotton fabric, there are some threads that go this way and some threads that go this way and they're woven together. So when you cut them, they'll just kind of start to unravel. If you use pinking shears, these little triangles actually cut the fabric in little miniature diagonals, which is called on the bias. So when you cut this fabric on the bias, because it's diagonal instead of straight across, it prevents some of that fraying. Not all of it, but some of it. So the easiest way to make a cloth wipe is to just take it and cut the edges off with pinking shears. So there you go. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. The problem though, is that when you wash it, it will begin to fray, especially over time, the longer you use them and the more that you wash them, as you can see. This has stayed intact pretty well though. And if you don't mind picking these threads off of your cloth diapers, then it's really not that much of a problem. Eventually, you know, it'll unravel to the point where you'll need to throw it away but that'll take a while. If you're going to do the pinking shear method, I would recommend doing it on one of these thicker flannels. This flannel that I have right here is really soft, but it's pretty thin and kind of flimsy. This one, still soft, but a little bit thicker and it has a little bit more structure to it. I have cut up these before using the pinking shear method and they just fray almost immediately in the wash. These ones hold up a little bit longer. So if you do this method, choose a fabric that's a little bit thicker. This also is the only no sew method of making cloth wipes. So if you don't wanna sew anything, then this is the method for you. There are three other options for creating your cloth wipes and all of them are going to involve sewing of some kind. The first method I'm gonna show you is going to be two ply cloth wipes. This will work better for your thinner flannels because it gives them just a little bit more structure. All right, start by making sure that your drink is nearby, of course. Next, you're gonna take two pieces of your flannel and you're gonna place them right sides together. Then you are going to clip or pin around the edges. And on one of the edges, I'm going to leave a gap of a couple of inches because we're going to stitch around the outside and we need a space to turn it right side out. So let's take it to our sewing machine and we are going to start from one point. We're going to put our needle down at the corner and pivot, I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll stop at this point and we're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. Make sure to have my drink near my sewing machine. Starting from one of my clips, which is gonna be near this corner, I'm going to forward and back stitch at the beginning. And then I'm gonna sew almost to the corner. When I'm about a quarter inch away, I'm going to put my needle down in my fabric, lift my presser foot and pivot, and then I'm going to sew all the way around until I get to this point here. All right, so now I am approaching the end and I wanna make sure I leave a two or three inch gap, but you need to make sure that you backstitch, otherwise when we turn the fabric right side out, we'll pop open our stitches. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this right side out. I'm gonna use my fingers to push into the corners. And now this is what my cloth wipe looks like, except that we have this little opening here. So what we're going to do is tuck this under. You're gonna fold it under about a quarter of an inch, which is how much our seam allowance is. You can pin it or clip it, but instead, I'm just gonna put it directly underneath my presser foot. 
and using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to top stitch all the way around the whole thing so that it will close this, but it will also give a nice professional look to our cloth wipe. And there you have it, a nice two ply cloth wipe with a top stitch. And this will not fray because there are no open edges. However, this method is kind of time consuming because you have to do two stitches. So I'm gonna show you now another type of finishing these where you don't need to do two stitches. Now start with two pieces of flannel, but this time we're gonna do wrong sides touching. So the right sides are facing out. What we're going to do is something called an overlock stitch. An overlock stitch is very common with garments because it finishes that inside raw edge on the seams, keeps it from fraying, makes it look professional. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do an overlock stitch around the outside of these. So this is going to be a two ply cloth wipe again, but with an overlock stitch instead of two stitches. So you only have to do one instead of the two different seams. If you have a serger, this would be the perfect thing to use your serger for. However, I don't have one. I just have my sewing machine. So I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now and let's figure out how to do that overlock stitch. My sewing machine actually comes with an overlock foot. So I am going to pop this one off and I'm just going to replace it with my overlock foot. The reason I'm using an overlock foot is because it has this line here that tells me where to line up the edge of my fabric because an overlock stitch is actually gonna go off the edge of your fabric and back on, and that's how it binds up these raw edges so that they don't fray. Now I'm gonna go into my sewing machine menu and choose an overlock stitch. In my sewing machine instruction manual, it tells me what kinds of stitches I should use for what kinds of fabric. So because this fabric frays easily, I'm using a closed overlock stitch. So it has an extra seam on each side and in addition to the zigzag one that goes in between and that helps to bind up this raw edge. So I'm gonna choose that overlock stitch. If you just have a different overlock stitch, choose that one. Or if you don't have an overlock stitch, choose a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to start part way down. The reason I'm not using pins or clips is because this flannel sticks together really well. So I don't really need to use them. You can if you want to, however, because then you can be sure that they won't move while you're sewing. So let's do an overlock stitch all the way around. While I'm sewing, I'm letting my feed dog do most of the work. So it's moving my fabric for me. I just need to make sure that my fabric is going underneath this here. There you have it. This is what the overlock stitch looks like on the edges. So then this is what your cloth wipe will look like. If you're using a serger, it doesn't take very much time, but if you're using a standard sewing machine like I am, it does take a little bit of extra time to do it, but you only have to do one seam instead of two. There's that. Now, if you like the one ply look, I'll show you how to do that with an overlock stitch as well. All right, this is the last way I'm gonna show you how to finish these off, so let's take a drink. Okay, because I'm just using one piece of flannel. There is no need to pin or clip or anything like that. Once again, I'm gonna use my overlock foot for my sewing machine. I used to think like, oh no, I can't let the needle go off the edge of the fabric. It's okay, it's gonna be fine, don't worry. What we're gonna do is just choose an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch if you don't have an overlock one. And we're gonna go all the way around the entire edge to just bind up that raw edge so it doesn't frame. Let's do it. This is what the one ply with the overlock stitch looks like. It's a little harder to keep these stitches even, 
when it's just the one layer of fabric. When it's two, it's a lot easier and it looks a lot more professional. But if you just wanna do the one ply, so you can have double the number of cloth wipes for the squares of flannel you cut, this could be a good option for you. Wow, I love the pinking shear method for just the sheer ease of it. I'm actually making these for a friend who's having babies. So I'm going to be doing this method for her uh, because I wanna make sure that they look all nice for her. If I was just doing them for myself though, I'd probably just do the pinking shear method and then just make a ton and throw them away as I need to. So I'm going to finish these up using the two ply top stitch method and then I'll meet you back here so I can show you how to fold them so they pop up. Ooh. All right, now I have finally finished all of my cloth wipes. I am going to show you how to fold them so that they pop up out of a cloth wipe dispenser. I love this wipe dispenser because it has this weighted thing in it. And you can see it's, <laughs> it holds everything down so that when you're pulling the wipes out, the lid or something doesn't pop out and the rest of them don't unfold. So it's really handy. To start, place one cloth wipe in front of you, then take a second cloth wipe and place it on one half of the first cloth wipe. So they're overlapping a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the bottom wipe and I'm going to fold it over. Okay, so now it makes a little sandwich like this. Then I'm gonna place a second cloth wipe on top of where I just folded so that it meets that edge. And then I'll take this one that's hanging out over here. I'm gonna fold it over. Then I'm gonna lay another one on top of the one I just folded and then fold over this extra one. Lay one on top, fold it over. Lay one on top, fold it over. Go just a few more. I don't wanna to do too much because I don't wanna overfill my wipe dispenser. So I'm going to stop here. Once you get to the end, just take this last one and fold it over like that so it makes a nice little pile. Then I'm gonna place them in my wipe dispenser and place my weight on top and then just take the top one and pull it through. And now you're all ready to start wiping baby butts. Now when I'm using these to change my daughter's diaper, I just pull one out and then take my cloth wipe spray and then spray it a couple times and use it as a wipe. You can store them wet too, but I just like to store them dry and use a spray. So I'm gonna teach you how I make this solution right now. You're going to need an empty spray bottle. I got a two pack of these. I'm pretty sure I got them on Amazon. I'll link them in the description if I can find them. You're gonna need one cup of water. You're gonna need one teaspoon of melted coconut oil, and you're gonna need Castile soap, or you can also use baby wash if you don't wanna use Castile soap. So you're going to take your coconut oil, you're gonna add it to your water. Then I measure a teaspoon of the soap and put that in. And then I usually just use the teaspoon to kind of stir it up a little bit and then pour it into the spray bottle. Ta-da, pretty easy. Before I spray it, usually I kind of swirl it around a little bit just to mix up any oil and soap that has been separated. So, there you go. How to make cloth wipes, how to fold them so they pop up, how to make the solution. You're good to go. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and then stick around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching.